Hi, thanks to one of my viewers for pointing this one out. Well, yes, we're taking a look at renewable energy again, but this time it's not solar, it's wind and it's revolutionary. Sing it with me. Power to the people. Power to the people right on. Say we want a revolution. So what are we looking at here? Well, it's a company called American Wind, and they've got this revolutionary new wind turbine technology. American Wind, who are we? It's a company that has developed the most state-of-the-art micro wind turbine ever brought to market. It's a complete thought change in the wind turbine industry. Never before has a one kilowatt generator been squeezed into a generator just three inches in diameter. But a powerful generator is nothing if we do not have the ability to capture the energy from the wind. The next step was to develop a blade design not using a simple airfoil, much like the wing of an aircraft, but to design the blade to a great maximum torque and speed. To do this, our founder, Robert Yost, used his background from designing jet engine turbines to develop a blade design that used both aerofoil technology and jet engine technology. Wow. So their product is what's called the Micro Cube, and it's a nine inch cube that can generate one kilowatt. <laughs> can you smell that? Yeah. Bullshit. And they claim it uh, starts spinning up at just one to two mile an hour wind. So that's actually pretty good. So yeah, you know, we're not worried about that. We're worried about these magical power output claims. Per the US Patent Office, America Wind has developed the first of this kind of generator. No, they haven't. We'll see that in a minute. But not only does it produce more power in a smaller space, it is nearly frictionless. Whoa, this is heavy. Where's my KY jelly? But the thing about this is that they actually take the micro cube and then they just stack them together because each one is apparently a one kilowatt rated generator. So they can stack them into from one into three cubes like this, or they can go bigger. You can get 50 of them for the wind wall or this giant advanced wind wall. You've got a hundred of these things. So they claim this is a 100 kilowatt wind generator. <clears throat> One of the first things I noticed is that some of their claims aren't consistent. Let's have a look down here at this triple one down here. They've got a little asterisk next to it and it says optimal wind speed. Whoop. 45 miles per hour is their optimal wind speed, i.e. the speed at which it produces the most like the peak energy. Yet let's go and look at the advanced wind wall here, which is just the same generator, except you've got a hundred of them in this uh, little fancy box on a little rotating uh, pivot thing so I can pivot with the wind. And let's go and have a look a bit deeper. So it's a hundred kilowatts. It's got a hundred of these units, a cutting speed of 1.5 miles an hour, which as I said, is actually pretty good. It's better than uh, most on the market. So yeah, that's all right. And can survive speeds up to 140 miles per hour. And look, they've got the power curve here is around uh, output and we achieve 100 kilowatts around 17 miles per hour and uh, it's actually capped at 100 kilowatts as you can see here which is common in uh, wind turbines they'll actually have uh, loads that'll kick in and actually uh, bleed it off to prevent uh, you know damage to the uh, units and stuff like that so this is a typical response of a wind turbine and they claim it's doing it at 17 miles per hour yet one cube on its own is 45. What? And they also claim the light gray line shows the power curve of our traditional wind turbine competitors uh, peaking here at oh, around about 30, 31, 32 or something miles per hour. Well, let's go actually have a look at a real commercial one. We'll check out this website uh, later because this has got some interesting data, which when we get to the data on the whiteboard, uh, this will be interesting. So this is an equivalent 100 kilowatt generator, a Hummer brand one, and it's got the power curve. There it is. 10 meters per second. Uh, it hits its peak 100 kilowatts and you can see it's got, it kicks, the limiter kicks in there and uh, limits that to avoid uh, damage. So yeah, that's about 22 miles an hour, 22 miles an hour. So yeah, um, not too far off this one. So nah. 
and check out this graphic here. It's a thank you, uh, very handy, because I didn't have to then go actually uh, produce a graphic and scale it uh, to size myself. So I'd say they got that about right. They claim that this like two and a half by three meter, uh, 100 kilowatt away array is equivalent to a large turbine like this. And the advanced power wall, look at this, like a solar panel, 4.4 watts per square foot. They claim a conventional wind turbine is 44.4 uh, watts per square foot, so 10 times better than a solar panel. My mm, sun's a bit dodgy there to begin with, and we'll go into the calculations in a minute and show why. But the advanced wind wall, look at this, two orders of magnitude better than a solar panel. Wow, and one order of magnitude 10 times better than a conventional wind turbine. Ah, oh, blown away. There's the specs for those playing along at home. It weighs 900 pounds. 17 miles per hour ambient airspeed. But wait, the CEO's won an Entrepreneur of the Year award. Let's go to the videotape. Robert Yost, CEO and President of American Wind. Many congratulations on winning the European CEO award for Entrepreneur of the Year, Energy Technology, North America, 2018. Thank you so much. How much energy can you get from it? Each microcube creates one kilowatt of electricity, and it has a new generator design that hasn't been built in 100 years. What we describe this thing is not a propeller airplane like the big wind turbines, it's more like a jet engine technology. So it actually increases the wind speed as it goes through it, as compared to slow it down with the big wind turbines. You take a microcube, you put it into a great big panel we call a wind wall, about three meters tall and about two meters wide, and it creates roughly 100 kilowatts of electricity. So what are the benefits of having smaller turbines arranged in this way? Well, we pick up more wind surface area. The big wind turbines only pick up about 3%. We pick up about 90% of the wind surface area. And that's where you get most of your power from, is the total surface area. <laughs> you heard the claim there that traditional wind turbines only pick up about 3% of the surface area compared to their one, which picks up 95%. And you can see why they're claiming that, because if you draw the circle around there, look at those thin little blades and you calculate the surface area, yeah, it's around about that 3% figure. And of course, their big uh, power wall thing, look, it's capturing almost practically everything, as he claims, 95%. Unfortunately, uh, that's not true. That's not how wind turbines work. You can't just take the surface area of the blade because they're designed as aerofoils and then that slows the wind down on a surface and turns the turbine and gives you a greater effective capture area so to speak i won't let, let's not go into the you know the huge details of wind uh, turbine designs because we can look at the data which proves that this is the case so please excuse the crudity of the model. Didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it, but we've got a uh, typical three-bladed wind turbine here. It doesn't matter how many blades. And we're going to calculate the energy or the power in the wind that can go through a particular diameter wind turbine. So in this particular case, I've drawn like a volume, a circular volume of air here. So we've got the area and uh, D is the distance, uh, the basically the thickness of the air there. And then assuming that passes through the wind turbine. Now we have to go back, as I said, to first principles here, kinetic energy. You almost certainly learned this formula in uh, like first year basic science in like high school science, you'd learn this, wouldn't you? Kinetic energy equals half mv squared, or half times the mass uh, times the velocity squared. Basic physics. So we actually could jump directly from this kinetic energy uh, formula to this industry standard formula here that's used in all of the wind power uh, energy industry. It's, it's the formula that explains it all. But I thought we'd just uh, derive this very quickly. So you can skip this bit if you don't care about uh, transforming that into the, where this actual formula comes from. So anyway, let's go. The volume of air inside here is the area, square area, times the depth here. And the air density uh, is a rho, that's not a p, that's actually a symbol rho, is uh, the mass divided by the volume here. I've got volume is just VL there to differentiate it from velocity, which is uh, V. So we can just rearrange that. Mass equals uh, rho times the volume. Now, we can take our kinetic energy formula up here, and instead of uh, having the mass, we can substitute in rho times the volume, times V squared. So it's the same formula, we've just uh, substituted 
in some equivalent stuff. Now, of course, the uh, volume of this is the area times the depth. So we can just change that from uh, volume to area times the depth, easy. And the depth here, this can be replaced by velocity times time. So we're just substituting in just to get this to pop out the other end. Now, because we've got two velocity components in this formula, V squared becomes V cubed. And here's the last step, power, because we want power, not kinetic energy. Power is kinetic energy divided by time. So if we divide uh, this uh, part here by time, the t's cancel out and bingo, you're left with power equals half times rho, which is the air density, times the area, times velocity cubed. Bingo, that is our industry standard wind formula that applies to all wind turbines, and it actually applies to uh, liquids as well. But anyway, um, because density is just air or a liquid or whatever it is, whether or not you have a like a uh, water turbine, for example, uh, you're gonna be using uh, the same formula. But this applies to windmill. This is the industry standard formula. This is how much power is available in a given volume of air to feed in to your turbine. You can't get any more than that. Now we have to take a look at this row figure, which is the air density, and this changes with uh, temperature. And you can go look this up in various uh, charts at a standard 20 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, it is actually 1.2041 kilograms per cubic meter. So if we actually put this into the formula and let's take a standard 10 meter per second wind speed, which is about 20, little over 20 uh, miles an hour, that's uh, pretty much where the peak of most wind turbines will be designed, pretty much a standard calculation figure in the industry. So 10 meters per second, uh, power equals a half times 1.2041 times, let's put per square meter, so one square meter um, times uh, the velocity, 10 meters per second cubed here, and that gives us 602 watts maximum ideal. This is the maximum ideal power that you can actually have in a 10 meter per second wind at 20 degrees C at that air density. So anytime you see any marketing claim whatsoever for any sort of uh, wind turbine that can get greater than 602 watts, per square meter area, you know they're full of crap because that would require over unity, i.e. getting more power out than what you put in from the wind. In this case, you're not putting it in, the wind's already there, you're just extracting from the wind. There's no way you can possibly get more than 602 watts uh, per square meter at that particular air density. Now, as it turns out, even the most ideal wind turbine can't achieve this figure, why? Well, not only because uh, like there's the like the turbine hubs in the way and things like that, and the blades don't capture you know precisely 100% of the wind. They act as airfoils, and that increases the effective capture area. That's why a lot of uh, you know your commercial, huge commercial ones are this uh, three-bladed design like this. It's kind of like an optimized uh, design for this type of wind speed and capture area and efficiency and and things like that. Now there's this thing called bet law. So there was this smart dude called Albert Betts early last uh, century who uh, came up with Betts's law. He wasn't the, I think somebody else came up with it at the same time. But anyway, it's called Betts's law. It states that you can't extract more than 59.3% of the kinetic energy going into a wind turbine or a uh, fluid uh, turbine. Uh, that is because when it actually uh, flows into it like this, it actually spreads out. Um, it can't capture it all and that uh, there's a you know he's analyzed all this and figured out that that is the absolute maximum figure that you can extract from it so anyone claiming to extract more than 59.3 percent of uh this 602 watts per square meter at uh 20 degrees at that air density is violating Betz's law. And I believe nobody's actually done it yet. There's a few people who claim that you can actually do it if you uh, also harness uh, thermal type stuff with it and other things. And this applies, uh, by the way, Betz's law applies to open frame uh, wind turbines like this, ones that don't have the frame around them. And all the designs that have actually tried this to actually put, like, encase in, in, in them in, in tunnels and things like that to try and get around uh, Betz's law, they've all sort of come a gutsa in practice. 
it's great in theory, and apparently you can actually do some simulations to prove you can get better, but when you try and do it in practice, bets as law wins every time. So applying Betz's law to our maximum ideal figure here, times 59.3%, gives us 357 watts per square meter. And this is actually called the power density, which again is an industry uh, standard figure that you'll find in the data sheet for wind turbines. And here's one of the data sheets for a huge uh, 100 kilowatt, uh, or I think 200 kilowatt wind turbine, which shows it's just over 300 uh, watts per square meter. And that's, you know, the, typically the best you'll get is like 80 to 85 percent. Or because as I said, you know, you've got the hub in there and you've got other sort of, you know, losses to do with the blade design. And and things like that but you know a good wind turbine is around about 80 percent of uh the betz's law not the actual maximum power so let's look at this wind wall in particular the biggest one the 100 kilowatt wind wall which they've supplied the power graph for and the full specs they actually specify 100 kilowatts output uh, which is electronically uh, capped and they claim that very clearly at 17 miles per hour which is 7.6 meters per second which is below the industry standard 10 but you know but doesn't matter it all comes out in the wash now its size is 96 inches by 120 inches i'm being generous in assuming that all of it flows into the wind wall uh, there's no you know losses anywhere else that's 7.4 square meters so you plug that into our industry standard formula you can't avoid this and bingo you get 1955 watts just under two kilowatts not 100 kilowatts as claimed wah, 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 wah. And there's no getting around this. The power in the wind that goes into your wind turbine, unless you funnel, get a big funnel and you capture it all in or something like that, then <laughs> you're going to be reliant upon this formula. And all it's dependent upon is the square area of it times the velocity squared. And the road, these are fixed uh, factors. That's it. That's the maximum power you can put into this thing. So if they're claiming they can get 100 kilowatts output for something that with this given square area and this given velocity, you can only have less than two kilowatts ideal maximum in the wind, that's over unity. That's getting more power out than you put in. Not possible, sorry. So right there, with your basic calculation of how much energy goes into your wind turbine from the wind, it's completely busted. I don't know how anyone with a straight face can make th this sort of claim. It's just ridiculous. Now, they do claim that they actually do somehow uh, violate Betz's law because they have uh, the blade design, they have a vacuum behind there and, you know, all that sort of stuff, which increases the effective speed and, uh, like, all sorts of stuff like that. Okay, whatever, you can uh, muck around with that sort of stuff until the cows come home. But the fact is, for this given area, capture area, you've only got less than two kilowatts maximum to put into the system. So even if you violate Betz's law and get your maximum uh, 600 watt power density per square meter, you're still nowhere near, like 50 times less than you claimed 100 kilowatts. You just can't do it. So I don't know why anyone takes these sort of claims seriously. Like this sort of stuff you can do on the back of an envelope and you go to just bust it. Don't even bother wasting your time with claims like this. It's ridiculous. And they just went to the United Arab Emirates. And trade mission to the United Arab Emirates. And will how will this help Alabama's businesses succeed? Well, American Wind was one of eight companies that took part in this trip. CEO Robert Yost tells me that it's trips like these that are not only important to sell Alabama products, but also to add new partners in making them. Thought about the turbine engine blade as so As revolutionary. The we'll get to blades that. on a big wind turbine. Why can't we use a turbine blade? So that's where I started at. And then from there, I developed uh, the generator. That generator became the basis for what Yost calls a microcube. Our generator is a very free flowing, free turning generator. The U.S. Patent Office come back and says it's the first new generator designed since 1896. Microcube Patented. is a small wind turbine designed to generate power more efficiently than standard large wind turbines you might see in fields or offshore. The device went through 39 revisions in order 39. to get to version number 40. The aerodynamics of the turbine um, take it from having a vacuum inside to outside to, to eliminating the vacuum. That was a big change. Created 17% more power. 
hang on, you just said 70% more power. Well, this one is 10 times, order of magnitude more. So, what? Now, it turns out that 80% claim is probably not off the mark because he didn't invent this idea. It's not new. Let's have a look. It turns out that there's a bunch of companies who have been developing these uh, jet engine. They're actually called ducted wind turbines because they got basically a duct around the blade. There's a company called Flow Design, um, or Ogan is the company Flow Design. Way back in uh, 2008, this is actually before <laughs> before they got their patent. Uh, here it is. I'll, I'll link in the patent down below if you want to have a look at it. We won't go into details. It's like, nah. Applied for in 2012. Anyway, there's uh, tons of prior art on these uh, ducted wind uh, turbines or these jet engine type uh, turbines. Developed a wind turbine that can generate electricity at half the cost of conventional turbines. The company recently raised $6 million in its first round of venture financing and they actually raised a lot more money than that, and they went belly up, as we'll uh, see. Anyway, typically a wind uh, approaches a turbine, almost half the air is forced around the blades rather than through them, and the energy in that deflected wind is lost. At best, traditional wind turbines only capture 59%. And it's all the same stuff. It's a shroud that detects and directs air through the blades, speeds it up, increased power production, generates much as much power as a wind turbine blades with twice as big diameter. So this company, which got massive venture backing from huge corporations like real, even Al Gore, like backed this, right? <laughs> this is how serious uh, this company was. And, and they were only claiming that like, you know, twice as big. They're not claiming this 10 times stuff that <laughs> American wind is. Anyway, what went wrong with uh, this flow design company's thing? Well, they installed quite a few of them. This one's on uh, Deer Island. Anyway, it looks very uh, unconventional. It doesn't look like uh, this design, but it's uh, you can basically see it's, you know, it, it's got a traditional uh, three-bladed uh, design with a, like a, a casing around uh, the outside. So the company is uh, Ogin, Ogin, and they raised more than $150 million, including uh, the attention of former vice president Al Gore. He was a senior partner at one of the investors, I think. Uh, late last month, the company entered receivership and its assets are up for sale. Found in New Zealand, they wrote, had to write it down to zero. They <laughs> they come a gutser. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. That's people's pension money. Jeez, this is great. What happened? We see this kind of thing periodically where somebody says they have something better than conventional windmills, says Paul Guype, a renewable energy analyst and author of the book Wind Energy for the Rest of Us. Usually they're crackpot inventors and they don't get much beyond a fancy website. But one of the things that is different with Ogan is the sheer scale of the money wasted on this venture and the names associated with it. That puts it in a different, different class. One issue with ducted wind turbines turbines is that while fiberglass ring can direct more wind through the blades, it creates a tremendous amount of drag on the device whether whenever wind is present. That drag means that the tower holds everything up, has to be engineered to be sturdier and more expensive than your garden variety tower. As a result, ducted turbines tend to stand less tall than conventional turbines, so they miss out on the brisker winds higher up. And that's one of the things with this thing. It's designed to sit on a ground or a small pole. It's not designed to go high up where the wind the better wind streams are. And they might claim, oh, but that's compensated for the fact that we can go at uh, lower wind speeds and things like, no, no, sorry, <laughs> not buying it. And wow, that Kiwi pension fund lost $50 million in that ducted turbine fiasco project. Wow, that that is sad. I know that this one is, you know, more traditional three-bladed uh, design, and we'll go into the data in a minute, to this, you know, turbine thing that they've got. This, you know, like, how many blades on that? You know, 10 blades or something? And apparently some former employees of the company, they're, they're speaking out, uh, several engineers. Um, and this is all anonymous uh, stuff, though, so... Take that for what it is. Flow Design and subsequently Ogan made outlandish claims about what their then theoretical wind turbine could do. Their claims were not as outlandish as some. <laughs> <laughs> but Flow Design and Ogan still fell into a common trap of promising that their unproven design was far superior to existing wind turbines that work reliably worldwide. And there's the catch. Reliably. 
I love this bit. I am taking the time to post about Ogun because I have a dog in this fight. At the height of the PR Blitz launched in 2008, yeah, they went bust. As did all these other companies. Alina, Energy, their, their Fantasy Wind Turbine, or if it's too good to be true, you can. I'll link this down below. You can read all these articles. Uh, the Wind Tamer, um, Dr. Wind Turbine, and officially kaput. Green Investing, this is why you avoid story stocks, i.e. ones that just have a story. For many Alabamians, the 2011 tornadoes brought devastation and destruction. But for Robert Yost, they also brought inspiration. Well, basically, my wife and I, when we were sitting on the back deck, and this pedestal fan was blowing in the breeze, you couldn't stay inside because it was too hot with no air conditioning. So what do you do? I thought about the turbine engine blade as so revolutionary. To the we'll get to blades that. on a big wind turbine. Why can't we use a turbine blade? The Shearwind Invalox, um, <laughs> another sad entry into the ducted turbine hall of shame. Like many others, it rises in a blaze of media um, and hype in the tech press. Unfortunately, Shearwind's pitch snared several unsuspecting high-profile clients, including the Nature Conservatory and the Michigan National Guard. And look at this thing. Oh yeah, that puppy's going to work. <laughs> ducted turbine debacle. Who will pay to remove it? <laughs> <laughs> Shearwind ducted disaster. Another ducted device dead. Shearwind Invalox bankrupt. <laughs> Shearwind demo turbine in need of demolition. Well, look at this one. <laughs> Demolish them all. None of them work. Well, they work. <laughs> <laughs> like solar roadways and other, you know, <laughs> things work, but yeah, they're just not as practical as, and not nearly come close to their claims. If they did, hey, the wind industry would uh, take them up and uh, they'd be billionaires, but no, nah, they've all gone bankrupt. All hype, no substance. The development, promotion, and marketing of the Vortex 7 configuration has all the hallmarks of the hubris characteristic of diffuser augmented wind turbine inventions. So uh, that diffuser augmented, it means that like they've got outside shells ducted. In short, the hype exceeded the turbine's performance and the company's promotion exceeded its ability to deliver. Some of the country's best engineers were swept up in the euphoria produced by one of New Zealand's most charismatic promoters. <laughs> Turbine company runs out of puff. <laughs> Vortex closed. No closure, no surprise. And I almost forgot, back in 2015, I'll link in this article, he tried to put four of these wind turbines on the top of his <laughs> hybrid car to try and do a road trip across the US. Anyway, I won't go into details, but <laughs> don't be misled. The car will still be a hybrid. It isn't a perpetual motion machine, <laughs> but the miles per gallon will exceed anything seen on the current gas hybrid creating a car that will rarely need refueling. <laughs> But this is great. In his lab, I saw where Yost and his staff were testing what they, whether they can break physics. They currently have a small USB fan propelling one of their turbines. Within the next few weeks, they plan to plug the USB fan directly into the turbine to see if they can power the fan with power from the turbine that the fan is creating power for. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap your head around that. They are skeptical that it will work, but looking forward to find out. Ah, wonder what happened to that experiment. I, I, I have no idea what the result of that would be. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that and found it uh, interesting. And it's not just about this wind wall one. As you saw, there's like half a dozen or more of these different, even just half a dozen huge projects that have tried to have this ducted fail and beat Benson's law and, and try and do it. But anyway, this one was just ridiculous in its claims. It's, yeah. More power out than you put it in for a given square area. It's just completely busted right off the bat. I'm sorry for spending half an hour or whatever it is on this, but yeah, that's just that's just nuts. So it doesn't matter how much snake oil you rub on the bearings inside this thing if they're manufactured by grey-bearded nude virgins. <laughs> you cannot beat the laws of physics, Captain. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And by the way, you can actually get my Fluxgate condenser t-shirt hand-drawn by me in the store down below. And don't forget to follow me on library.tv. I'm trying to crack a thousand subs on there. I'm trying to beat Barnacles. He's got like 1,500 subs or something like that. Gotta beat him. Anyway, <laughs> hope you liked it. Catch you next time. Hello.